what's up everybody? It's your boy Klein Guy John. Um Oh for a second I thought I didn't have the camera position properly, but um Hope you guys hope y'all are doing well. I'm here in well in the battery tunnel or the Hugh L. Grant tunnel. Still called the battery tunnel. Coming from Brooklyn into Manhattan. It's about to be 7 o'clock in about a minute. And uh, heading up to my to the job. Uh, still doing these uh, these uh, panel inspection and readouts, which I'll probably be doing for the remainder of the year, unfortunately. So, yeah, maybe I'll, uh, I mean, I can't really record anything. I wish I could show you guys how it's done, but unfortunately, these apartments are occupied by very important people, um, so... Unfortunately, you know, unless I come across like a, a vacant apartment, which I think some of these properties, some of them are vacant. Most of them are occupied. But if I do come across a vacant one, I can probably show you a quick vid how I, how it's done. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I don't know if I probably mentioned it before, um, we're doing, I'm basically doing an insulation testing, wire, um, insulation test, or wire insulation test with the Megger, got to finally understand how to use one, uh, oh, I think this guy is a little blocked, there you go, alright, there he is, okay. yeah, trying to keep the camera angles good, so, yeah, uh, the start, oh, we start at, I start at 9, but I like, I, I get up every morning, get up early, come to the city, because, you know, most of you guys, those of you guys who are contractors, or work for a contractor, and you're in the service department, or you're going to a job site, you all know that it's pretty tough after 7, 8, uh, after 7, but after, like, 8 or 9 a.m., it's tough to find parking in Manhattan. Uh, but lately, I've been lucky. I've been very lucky and very fortunate. Um, so yeah, uh, I know a lot of. I, I know I haven't been doing any videos. It's been a while, man. I've, I've those of you saw my last video announced that you know, or saw me on Instagram. I got married. Uh, me and my wife uh, been married for about, about seven months now, um, and now. We are expecting twins, fraternal twins. Uh, we announced it on Instagram, or I, we announced it on Instagram. I announced it on Instagram as well. Uh, we're having a twin uh, boy and girl. So, yeah, actually, I'm actually really psyched about it. Um, it's gonna. It's definitely. It, it feels. It feels definitely different, but in a very good way. Uh, I'm expecting things to be tougher, uh, you know, raising two kids, it's going to be really, I just got to feel, I, I just know for a fact, just by remembering when I was being raised by my parents and it was tough, it was rough, it was rough on them, uh, so I have to expect that, uh, which I am, and also I've now I'm actually working a second job. Um, it's not a it's like part time here and there. Uh, I do I'm now I'm doing DoorDash, which I actually quite enjoy doing because it's pretty cool. Like the neighbor, I, I deliver around my neighborhood. I'm familiar with it. You know, um, people are nice, very good people. You know, and I enjoy it. It's a little extra income, you know, got the kids coming, so... Been wanting to do food delivery on the side for quite some time, just never got around to it, and I finally did when I got my bicycle all set up and everything, and, you know, but, yeah, it's, it's paying the bills, putting food on the table, it's, you know, it's good to actually earn a little extra income here and there. Uh, but 
also, you know, if you guys heard, those of you who heard, New York City's getting, it's getting rough out here, man. You know, a lot has gone down. Um, it's getting tougher and tougher every day. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to scrape by with the hours I'm getting. It's not easy. Definitely isn't. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say, right? So, yeah, look, hey, I'm still rocking the VCG construction hat. Love this hat. Shout out to Vince from VCG Construction. Dude, you are so, you're doing so well, man. I gotta, I gotta say, um, Vince is a great guy. He's a good guy, you know. Uh, don't believe what others tell you. I met him in person a couple times. You know, he invited me over to a shop. Uh, I think about maybe three, three or four times. I think three, three or four times I've been down there hanging out with him, Nick. You know, Nick is not around anymore, but I sort of keep tabs on him a little bit on on Instagram. He's on Instagram still. See, he's doing really well. Shout out to Nick. Um, yeah, man, uh, it's been a while, it's been a while, I've, I've done a lot of videos, I've been wanting to do so, I, I want to, but it's just the timing, it, it really, I'm just gonna be honest, it really sucks, <laughs> you know, not having enough time, but I gotta figure it out, man, I gotta make, I gotta make the time, man, sometimes I make the time just by right, right now, just in, being in the van, driving on my way to work, you know, I'd love to do a tour review on the in the van, because <laughs> most likely that's probably what's going to happen, is doing little tour reviews, but uh, what's awesome, right, I just got a delivery yesterday, and check this out, I needed this for the, for the test that I'm doing for the, uh, the readouts, this thing, Ideal Shirt Test, Shirt Test Circuit Analyzer, this thing is a game changer, man, awesome, um, I'll explain to you guys later, what that does, and those of you electricians who know what that does, you know, it's it's badass. And then I and then I got them to order me the circuit analyzer that does GFCI and AFCI testing, and also shows the the data of like the trip, uh, the, the time that time that it takes for the GFCIs and the AFCIs to trip. Which I need as well because I got I got some AFCI um, breakers I'm dealing with and I need the data so I got put in the data uh, for those so yeah it's it's um, you know and then I'll also show you guys how to how the Mega works it's a uh, Mega is actually a brand it's a company um, I think it, they're based in I think they have an American branch here in the U S I think in like Illinois I think it was or Texas. I, I, I'm not too sure, but those of you who are, you know, watching, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, but I think the one that we that I received that my the company ordered to send to me was ordered from uh, the UK, and it works the same way. Um, what else? But yeah, so I had to learn. I never used a mega before in my 11 years in this industry. I have never done a, a wire insulation test, so it's a first for me. I'm gaining a little bit of experience, um, you know. So I guess I'll show you guys. I guess when I have time at home, I can just whip it out and show you guys how it works. Um, but I'm still looking. I'm still doing more research on it because they're, they're you know I had to learn from like YouTube videos. They sent me a DVD. <laughs> Uh, that came with the tool, but it turns out the DVD doesn't work with American American Electronics because it was developed in the UK, so it kind of sucks. I, I can't I, I can't play it on like my PS4 or a regular DVD player or a CD-ROM uh, driver, so yeah, that, it is what it is. Um, so I had to go on there like I gotta go on YouTube and learn how to use a Mega. Um, there's different types of Mega or Mega or, or I call them. O, um, uh, Magometers. It's actually pronounced 
from what I was told going to trade school, megometers or mega ohm meter. People still call it mega ohm meters. I should pronounce megometer uh, because it's all one word. If it was separate, we'll say mega ohm meter. But yeah, mega ohm, megometer, potato, potato. Um, so yeah, it's it's a pretty cool tool. I I, I like it. It's expensive. <laughs> You know, Klein makes one as well, uh, but Megger is a real high-end product, quality product. It's not only just expensive, but it really is an accurate tester. Uh, the one I'm using, unfortunately, they, they it doesn't do uh, ground, I think it's called ground fault loop test, or no, I'm sorry, uh, ground impedance loop test, meaning it just tests throughout the whole... Like, I gotta do a test where from ground throughout the whole building or something, like a ring test. It doesn't do that. Um, so that requires a special megger uh, or a uh, megometer that specifically does that type of work, that does that type of testing. But, um, let's see. Let's see. Okay, we're good here. I'm on the 10th Ave. Yeah, so that's going to require a different type of uh Megometer or mega ohm meter, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Test. And then I use the circuit analyzer, the shirt test circuit analyzer comes in good, comes in handy because I got to get the voltage drop readings, um, and the uh, the oh, it, it gives me the impedance, total impedance reading on live wire, which I also got to put in. It's a really awesome tool. Um, if you're an electrician. Or you're like a couple of years in it, you don't have that tool. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It'll really help you out. It'll save you time and money. Um, it's an expensive tool. Don't get me wrong. It's like I think on Amazon it goes for like 134 and change, 134.80. I think it was. Um, get it. Totally worth it. I, they also make one that does both GFCI and AFCI. I did see it once, only one time. When I was looking for the tool, this specific tool, and they had one that does both AFCI and GFCI, but it was it, it sold out quick, and now it's not it's not on on the on Amazon. So I think he, I don't know if they discontinued it because I went on Ideal website, they don't have it. Um, I did see someone, I think it was on YouTube, somewhere on YouTube, someone did have it, and it was a pretty cool tool. Um, works the same way, it was a circuit, it was the same sure test circuit analyzer that does both GFCI and AFCI testing, uh, which is an addition to, you know, if you want to make sure your AFCI breakers or your AFCI devices are working. Speaking of which, I speaking of AFCI, I, I, I'm surprised that a lot of, you know, I've asked around, uh, like in supply houses, and I was just thinking about this a couple of weeks back. I was at a supply house picking up an order for a van stock order, and um, you know, I asked the I asked the guys there like, "Hey, you guys sell AFCI uh, receptacles?" And they said, "Yeah, but you know, they're pretty pricey. They're more expensive than GFCIs." And a couple of electricians were in line. They looked over to me and said, "Wait a minute, they make AFCI receptacles?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude. They made they they started coming out with that a couple of years ago." And before that, it was just GFCI and AFCI breakers. Now they have AFCI receptacles that look that look like GFCI, but they're arc fold devices, um, and they're really good. They're really good. Now, a lot of electricians that I've come across, I asked about that. They they didn't believe. It. You look it up online. They have them now. They, they're out. They're out there. The only thing is, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend, it's not recommended to install AFCI devices or receptacles in each room. And what I mean by it is like, I, I've been into apartments where I've seen so many GFCI receptacles in multiple rooms. And it's like, dude, that's, that's not even, you don't need to do that. You know, um, and I can understand why because some of these, um, some of the outlet boxes are not bonded. There's no equipment ground, and 
I gotta turn here actually. I gotta make a turn. I think it's on 48. Yeah. So, anyways, back to it. Um, I see people, people's homes with so many GFCIs, and then I come around to other people's some apartments, and they have multiple AFCIs. And I tell them like, listen, we're here to do this installation test. I don't think we can commence it because it's going to take too much time to take out these devices, take them apart, just so I can do an, a wire installation test. It, it, what happens is when you use a mega, I'm going to call it mega because that's a product, whatever. A mega, they, most people call it megas. Um, when you're doing a wire installation test with a mega, it's advised to unplug everything you have plugged in, unplug any appliances because it could interfere with the test. And if you have GFCI or AFCI devices, disconnect them. I get so much interference. I don't get proper readings because sometimes there'll be a GFCI hiding behind a, a dresser drawer, you know, that I don't know about. And it's like, oh, I'm not getting proper readings. And, you know, and it's not because that the wire is compromised. It's because of the, the, the GFCI and the AFCI devices have these circuit small little CTs or circuit sensors that interfere with the installation test you have to remove them when conducting that test while the power's off um, but going back um, for the AFCI devices it's recommended here in New York City I don't know how it is in other states so look it up in your local code but in the NEC it is states that you know using AFCI breakers or a device or a receptacle depending you know because you put AFCIs in living rooms bedrooms um, you can put one in, in, a, in a dining room uh, you can put one in hallways um, family rooms etc except for bathrooms kitchens swimming pool any any area that deal that that is that has anything to do with water being involved, you know, or has water, like sinks and stuff, you can't put AFCIs in there because they're not GFCI breakers, they're arc fault breakers, so, I mean, arc fault devices, so arc fault circuit interrupters, you put those, you put at least one device, when it comes up to new construction, never put a GFCI, I mean, an AFCI breaker or AFCI receptacle for rooms in existing construct an existing um, dwellings because they're required by code they're only allowed to be installed when there's new construction when the when the home is being re renovated or reconstructed uh, this traffic is insane in Manhattan yeah they're, they're doing these congestive pricing soon they got all these scanners on in Midtown area it's it, it's actually like nonsense you, you guys got to see it, man. It's, it's ridiculous. You got to pay to come to work. Anyways, back to it. Uh, AFCI devices are... Uh, by code here, you have to put one in each bedroom. Or you could just put a, 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 a faceless AFCI um, device. It looks like a Decora receptacle, but it only has the two test buttons. They do make those. So it has to be the very first device that comes off the circuit breaker into the unit, into the room, and it has to be the very first device in the room that feeds the rest of the receptacles. So then that way all the receptacles are arc fault, AFCI protected, or arc fault protected. Um, same goes for GFCI. Um, for GFCI breakers or devices, I'd like to put when in, whenever doing like, you know, a renovation or especially a kitchen, um, my first device would be a GFCI. Um, and I'll put the rest, like, sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, I put the rest, like, just regular receptacles, but they're going to be GFCI protected, you know, because it can still pass code. You know, a lot of guys tell me, well, you know, I put GFCIs in this. Yeah, you could do that, definitely. It's 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 a standard, you know. It's a, not a standard, but it's a, it's a practice, common practice. You put a GFCI in every... You know, uh, you know, within the sink area, um, within six six feet, within the edge of a sink, 
a kitchen sink or a ba- or a, a wash basin or whatever, you know. Um, but if it's more than six feet, normally I just put they'll be AF they'll be GFCI protected with a GFCI breaker, you know. Um, sometimes like if you're in a tight spot where you're like, you know what. I don't want to spend a ton of money on GFCI, GFC high, so I'm just going to put a, a GFCI breaker. That's completely fine. That's that's still passable in code. I had a, um, you know, I had an inspection in Brooklyn done where the inspector was like, you know, looking around. He saw a few violations um, that technically I wasn't there for to oversee. Uh, apparently I didn't get to finish that job myself. They sent someone else to do it, but there was a couple of violations, um, that I had to go back and remedy. But one of them he, he did a violation for was, uh, part of the kitchen counter, uh, had some outlets, had some receptacles that didn't have GFCI. They were just basically receptacles with USB they were beyond six uh, six feet the edge of a sink, and he cited me for it. And he was like, "Well, these aren't the tamper resistant or whatever." Now, mind you, they were tamper resistant, except for the the only one that wasn't was the um, the USB receptacle. Uh, I believe they make them tamper resistant. I don't know. Um, so I had my service manager look it up while I was busy finishing up there, and apparently he couldn't find it. Then I tried finding it, couldn't find tam- tamper resistant, you know, um, receptacles that have the USB. And I was like, wow, that's that's weird. So I told the uh, I told the inspector, I said, well, that side of the of the kitchen of the counters. They're GFCI protected. He looked at me and says, no, they're not. No, they're not. I don't see GFCI. It's just circuit breaker. So he, he, he failed me on that one. I don't know why. Uh, turned out when he came, I guess when he came back, he passed because it turned out I was right. I had a GFCI protecting that side of the kitchen counter because it was already beyond, well, six feet of the sink. So he kind of felt dumb. Uh, he kept saying, oh, there's no GFI, no GFI either. I was like, GFI circuit breaker. GFCI circuit breaker. Protecting that circuit. So, um, those of you who are um, inspectors too, honestly, you guys got to really, really check those. Like, he checked the panel, and I don't know how he missed that part. Like, I literally had it, a panel schedule said GFCI kitchen counter. He said GFCI breaker label for kitchen counter. He didn't even see that. That's like, whoa, what the hell? Um, and the AFCIs, yes, he cited me for AFCIs because the guy who was supposed to put the AFCI breakers, he forgot. So I had to go in and replace them. Um, but other than that, that, that inspection passed. It was all good at the end. Um, but yeah, when it comes down to, you know, kitchen... And I learned this because a lot of inspectors are don't realize that, yo, know, the kitchen sink is on one side of the kitchen and all the way down the streamline, there's no GFCIs because they're away from the sink. So what I do, just to keep them sort of happy, well, keep them happy, I just put GFCI breakers on that side of the kitchen counter. And the rest are just regular GFCIs on a regular breaker, circuit breaker. Um, they get real antsy about that for some reason. And they totally forget that the GFC, that, that counter, which is way beyond the way from the sink, where there's no water present, they don't realize that that's on a GFC high circuit. And, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you don't, I don't think you necessarily have to put a GFCI circuit breaker, but I just do it just to keep them happy, but they still try to fail me, and it's like, they forget that, you know, they complain, oh, there's not GFCI protected, it's not GFCI protected, that's on wall, it's within, it, it's with, it's beyond six feet, so there's no way, it's away from a splash zone area, so there's no way for it, oh, but you know, yeah, people put drinks and this and that, okay, granted, 
but they are GFCI protected. Like, oh, how? GFCI breaker. Just to make you happy. But it's not really necessary. I think they, uh, some of these inspectors don't realize that in the code book. And I even looked it up. It's like, you don't, you don't necessarily need, need that. You know, what, whatever. I do it anyway. You know, keep their mouth shut. No disrespect to the inspectors. But you really got to read your codes, code book, because some of you guys are, some of you, not all of you. All of you, I know there's a, there are a couple inspectors that I've came across that they were very knowledgeable. They, they knew what they were looking for and they knew what they were doing. And they did a good job. You know, fail or pass, they did a good job, you know, pointing things out. So, man, this video is almost like 25 minutes long. Sorry, guys. Um, but anyways, going back to it. Yeah, I put GFCIs. AFCI devices are really good. Just I would, perf I would suggest if you're going to do, you're going to run a circuit for a new bedroom. Yes, they have to be AFCI protected for bedrooms, living rooms. Uh, you know, uh, family rooms, dens, library rooms, or whatever. But as long as there's no. It, it, AFCIs can't. AFCI uh, devices or breakers cannot be cannot be used for bathrooms, kitchens. Uh, they cannot be used for garages. Uh, garages do are susceptible, susceptible uh, or basements susceptible to water um, because you have plumbing. You have, you know, especially garages. You you, you can get floods. It's possible to get floods and you have moisture build up. All that sort of, all that jazz. So. Um, if you're doing it, it's just for those. Look up your city code, uh, local codes, whatever. Um, NEC code book is actually good. It explains that. Um, so that's my take on that. And they're really good. Um, yeah, you're going to have some be tripping on you when you plug stuff in. You know, then I've got customers telling me, oh, yeah, the breaker keeps tripping because every time I unplug, plug or unplug something, you know, I see an arc and then it, it stops working. I think there's something wrong with the breaker. No, you have an AFCI breaker, arc fault circuit interrupter. It senses the arc once you plug something in and it does its job. It trips on safety. All you gotta do is just reset it. You know, and if it, and if it constantly trips, I mean, get a, get a replacement. You know, sometimes these AFCI breakers can be a little bit faulty at times. They'll, trip new they'll you'll get nuisance tripping from time to time these devices aren't perfect so um yeah look up your city city code um your local codes as well but anyways back to it again um preferably you know here in new york city we use afci breakers most of the time the devices are slightly slightly more expensive i guess uh, I prefer, hey, if you don't want to, you know, put in a, a AFCI breaker, because I know AFCI circuit breakers and GFCI circuit breakers, or combination GFCI, AFCI breakers, you can make them, I've seen them, um, but they're way more expensive, but they are expensive nonetheless. Um, these devices are expensive for a reason, the electronics that they, that they, uh, built into them are expensive, they're not cheap, and um, I would just, honestly, if it was me, I would just put AFCI receptacles, like the very first devices that come, the very first device that you walk in the room, it's right there, um, you know, if something you plug in trips, the device, you know, works as a GFCI, it'll trip, and you just reset it. You know, instead of walking all the way to the electrical panel, because we've, you know, that could be a pain. Then you got to find which breaker it is. There's, there's some apartments that have, that I've been through that have multiple, a, a, a crap ton of AFCI breakers. And they, they may be labeled, but they're not too sure. The customer doesn't really know which, which, which one they controls in a room. You know, they'll, they'll be tripped. Yeah. All you got to look for is the trip one, but you know, they don't want to go all the way to their basement or into like another side of the apartment so i always suggest hey let's put an afci uh, receptacle so if it does trip all you gotta do is like hey let me just walk across a few feet and boom reset reset it you know 
I find it more convenient and simple, easy. Uh, you don't got to walk back all the way to the circuit breaker, you know. Um, but I would only put them in cases where, like, the panel is very far from the room, and I would just put a G AFCI device, um, especially with GFCIs. Now, GFCI's breakers are very convenient at times, depending on the scenario. Like, I, I would normally go with a, with those type of circuit breakers, depending the size of the home or the dwelling. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna make sure. Let this guy go. Go ahead, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. I'm not, I'm not gonna go that way. Um. Yeah. So I, I would. I, I, like, it, let's say, for instance, the, the the apartment's, like, really small, and it's like a studio. Uh, put an arc fault circuit interrupter, uh, arc fault circuit breaker, and a GFCI circuit breaker for the bathroom, you know, and that's it. Because the panel's going to be, most more than likely, the panel's going to be in the same living space. So you don't have to technically walk a far distance, you know. Uh, now, for mansions, okay... I get a lot of this because I remember I've, I've been questioned about this before by an apprentice. Uh, for mansions, look, you can do whatever you want. You can put arc fold circuit breakers or GFCI circuit breakers for, you know, for a room, different rooms. Honestly, I like to make it convenient for the customer, you know, and just put arc fault devices, receptacles, one per room. It has to be the first device into each room living space, and then for rooms like bathrooms, uh, yeah, like bathrooms, uh, laundry rooms, uh, yes, you could put a GFCI, you know, or GFCI breaker, I would normally just put a GFCI, but for dwelling bedrooms, like dwelling units, bedrooms, you know, living spaces, recreational rooms, yes, AFCI, I would most likely recommend an AFCI receptacle, due to the fact if, like I said, if someone plugs something in, and, you know, the customer doesn't have to go all the way to the other side of the mansion, or into the basement, and reset the breaker, he could just, he or she could just push the button, the test, the, the reset button right there, and then, boom, you're back, you're back, you know, you're back in show business. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I like to make things convenient for the customer. You know, even though it's it it is those devices are expensive. Let's just at least make it make it convenient. Make it convenient. Um, but uh, first, like the last the last renovation kitchen renovation dive I did, the panel was between the kitchen and the bedrooms which was fine, and, you know, 